If you own a camera like FS7 or FS5, or even a C90 from Sony, you know that it only has LAN control, and you might have a remote control like I'm BP30 from Sony, but the disadvantage is that you can't take it all the way out into your master control room where your CCU operator sits, so you want the real RCP. Now, luckily, uh, Skyhoy has such an RCP, and it will work with your uh, uh, FS7 or even your C90 as I just said. So all the cameras that has LAN, LAN inputs, you know, those small uh, 2.5 millimeter jacks on the cameras. The RCP itself is a um, controller that looks like this. This um, is a special form factor you find in a lot of master controlled rooms and OB vans. It's, uh, it fits nicely into a rack, you'll find many of them side by side, and it has this iconic joystick at the, at the bottom of the controller, which is a one-way joystick, uh, like a fader. It has a ring for Master Black and a button on top as well. So on the RCP uh, from Skyhoy, you find a number of buttons on the top for adjusting parameters, and you can do that for LAN cameras as well. So in this video, we'll take a look at how the RCP V2 from Skyhoy can work with an FS7, or in this case, a C90 type camera. So uh, one of the things you should keep in mind is how do we actually send the LAN commands to the camera? We use this little box, it's powered over Ethernet, it's called Ethernet LAN link, and you need to buy one of those along with the RCP. So the RCP talks to this one over Ethernet, and this one is connected using that 2.5 inch jack over to the camera. So we are looking at the camera picture right here, and the RCP, as you can see it here, we have this um, the joystick in the bottom. Let me just see if I can show you. And let's start out by looking at iris. So with the joystick, you can see that we are able to adjust the iris of the connected camera. This is all communicated over length. Now, at this point in time, I think I, I want to put in a word of caution here, because if we move this joystick really fast, then we may not get the exact results we, we aim for. Let me just see if I can bring it a little bit out of balance. Now I'm just saying it because, yeah, uh, yeah, all right. So right now you see that we have um, uh, Iris at F2 point, oh, sorry, 4.8 and not 4.0, um, which is like the, the most I can get out of the camera at this point. So now I pulled the joystick back a little bit and then forth, and that's simply because the, the way we are working with the LANG protocol is circumventing built-in features of the LANG protocol. So we need to map a joystick like this to sending pulses forth and back over length to the camera. And if that gets out of sync, if you move the joystick like this, then you may need to recalibrate. Now, luckily, when you operate cameras like this, it's, it's hardly the case that you're just pulling the joystick forward. But if you do, we, we have uh, ways you can recalibrate. For instance, you'll see up here that we have direct access to the iris on this knob, and you can see I'm currently adjusting it. So we have other features, like we can actually uh, zoom a little bit, we can um, set the zoom speed, and if you turn this knob, you'll zoom in steps. So you see I have a step size defined by my speed down here. So if I reduce my speed and I turn the zoom knob, you'll see that the steps are much smaller. It's even almost not possible to see the zoom move. We can go the other way as well, of course. Now, the same goes for focus, so, um, and let me see, you can see the focus just came up there, it's 0 0.5 meter, now it's, it's 0.7 meters, and so on. And likewise, if I reduce the speed, or I change the speed of the focus, I'll have smaller, um, smaller steps for my focus adjustment. Let me just see if I can succeed in doing this. So maybe now the steps became even too small, so I just want to... See if I can get it in focus, and I think I succeed right there. Now, that, that is one, one of the drawbacks with the LANG protocol is that you can easily get to spam it. So you generally have to be a little bit careful how quickly you're moving the knobs or you're flooding the device with commands. That is totally the same that, that would happen if you had a, um, a LANG controller like an RMBP30. It is something that is built into the protocol, but sometimes it becomes a little more obvious when you have a powerful device like an RCP which is basically designed to give you a much better user experience than having knobs without any feedback in the displays. Now, um, we have white balance uh, settings over here. Can I activate that? Well, maybe I'll get back to that, because what I wanted to do is to go to the menus down here. We have a selector up here for five different menus, 
five different menus. And in the first one, I can toggle my menu in the camera on and off. This is a super powerful feature that you, of course, would be very happy to find because you can sit now on a, on a far distance and access stuff in the menu on your remote camera. And the way you navigate this um, could be by using this button down here where you can, you can enter into the menu and do stuff and then exit again and so forth. So um, this is a four-way button, so pressing the up and down sides of the buttons will do this for you. Otherwise, these settings will give you access to the white balance, you can see, and if, then if you are using, um, that might even be true for this one, uh, button up and down, you can see I go to preset A, I can access preset B, I can access, let me see, what else do we have down here? This is basically what you already know from the camera. So you know your camera and you know you can adjust these things. So in this case, it corresponds to pushing the, the white balance button and then using the menu dial on the camera to change settings for the white balance. Likewise, I have access to the shutter speed. I can use the menu dial up here to access the shutter speed. Um, oh, I'm sorry that I have actually not been able to show you. I, so now, now you can see what I'm talking about. The button white balance right here was the one that I, I just pressed before and I have this button that will help me to navigate um, the different presets, right? And uh, when I was in the menu just before, that was the button I was using to navigate the menu, enter into one of the levels. If I press on the side like that, enter further in, and then I can now adjust the volume and I can then toggle out of the menu again. Now, um, so same thing goes for this one up here. This is just a knob which you might want to use to navigate the menu instead. Or as I just showed you, if we go to shutter speed, we can adjust the shutter speed using this dial. Now I go to gain. Same thing is true for gain. I can adjust the gain like this. But I think if I press the button a second time, the same thing happens if you press the button on the camera a second time and it goes into auto gain mode like you just see right now. Now I'm back to manual gain and I'll reduce it a little bit so we have a more pleasant picture to look at. Right, so if I move on to the next menu up here, you'll see that it basically does not change what these buttons do. They are iris, zoom and focus. And uh, down here I have now recording. So let's start recording. I can do that on the remote and you can see nice feedback on the button there. Then I have um, thumb, that means I enter now my media manager. So this menu is, is um, let me see, yep, thank you. So, and in the media manager, I can move around and see previous clips I've been doing. So, um, let me see, I have a clip right there. I wanna play it, so now I have a play button and I have a pause and a stop button. So let me play back this clip and I, I can now stop it again and so forth. If I want to exit, I press thumb again. That's totally like pressing the thumb button you already have on your Sony camera. And then we can move on to the next menu here. This will give you control over what you see in the display. So obviously I enabled the display on the output from the camera. So it's quite helpful if I press this button, you can see I'm cycling which um, informations are shown on the display. Uh, I have access to the focus magnifier, um, so unfortunately I don't see it here. That would be visible only on the viewfinder apparently, but you can uh, man manip manipulate the focus magnifier too. We have a, a grid uh, function here, which is also a cycle function. Let's see if I can get out of it again. And we had the thumb function again, which was also find in, in, found in this menu right there. So there's certain things that we have repeated in some of the menus, grouping them together. And now we have the menu menu. So in the menu menu, you can again toggle the menu like here, but instead of having a single four-way button that allows you to navigate up, down, left, and right, you have up, down, left, and right buttons that will allow you to do the same. So that's up and down and so forth. You can enter a menu like this, enter further on and so on. So that's menu navigation, but in a different way. And then finally we get to this um, menu. It's advised that when you connect these devices, you look if the power is on. That's, this is uh, one of the things that will confirm to you that connection has been established to the camera. And then you have stuff like counter reset. So you can see I reset the counter by that one. I can also enable red tally. 
and turn it off again. So we have green tally as well down here. If you have an FS7, I think it is, that has um, uh, motorized ND filters, you can access that and of course change the ND filters up and down using this button. You have stuff like auto iris and even down here in the bottom you can see we have uh, the usual active panel which means that nothing happens when you pull a handle. If I turn it off again you can see something does happen when I pull the handle. Um, I have auto iris and just look at the screen you'll see momentarily it goes to auto iris and adjusts and then it goes back again. You have auto focus here and the preview button is usually assigned to flipping the relay on the bottom of the RCP. The red tally function you saw just before can actually be accessed by a GPI input on this controller. So when that GPI input is triggered, it is sending a red tally signal to the uh, camera over LANK and when it's released again, it will send um, a, a no tally signal back to the camera. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the, the Sony LANK implementation using a real RCP talking through Ethernet LANK link to a Sony camera with the usual 2.5 millimeter input jack. Come to our booth at the various trade shows we go to and we typically bring one of these solutions out so we can have a chat about how it works. You can try it in real life and uh, we can help you to um, make a, a proposition for how you can integrate this with your live productions.